Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley and driving back from court, figured I'd shoot a little video on probable cause. So I'm gonna talk to you specifically about DUIs. I've had a bunch of DUIs lately and it seems that we're always attacking the probable cause for the stop, right? Which is a fourth amendment issue, right? The search and seizure and 14th amendment due process. So what does all that mean? When you're driving down the street, when can an officer stop you? Well. If he reads your tag and it comes back that the tag doesn't match the vehicle, he can stop you. If you swerve out of your lane, he can stop you. If you blow a red light or a stop sign, he can stop you, right? So that's the basic portion of how someone comes into contact on a DUI. Now, there are other ways. You could be sleeping in your car on the side of the road where you're not actually driving the vehicle, or you could be sleeping in your car in a parking lot or just sitting there resting an officer can come up and do what's referred to as a welfare check where he's just helping society make sure that the person didn't have a heart attack or a stroke or had some kind of medical issue. So most of the stops in DUI tend to be a stop of a, a vehicle in motion. So let's just say that the stop is valid. Let's say you're doing 35 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. Well, seems reasonable. Well, why is the cop bothering me? Because he can, right? That's his job. So you're doing five miles over the speed limit. He comes over and as he approaches your vehicle, as he approaches you as a person, he normally asks you to, for your license and registration. And then he usually starts talking to you while you're doing that. That's called divided attention because he's trying to pay attention. He's making observations of are your eyes bloodshot? Is your face flush? Are your words slurred? Are you lethargic? He's looking for factors that can give him reasonable suspicion to begin a DUI investigation. So what's the most common? Odor of alcohol, flush face, slurred words. Those are probably the three most obvious. If he has a criteria of three things, three observations, then he can ask you to step from the vehicle and that's reasonable suspicion to begin a DUI investigation. So what does he do with the DUI investigation? Well, hopefully it's on camera, either on his body camera or his car camera. He usually brings you to a spot which is a little bit more lit, it's supposed to be level, flat surface, um, void of any debris. And he usually starts out with the HGN, which is the eye test. When you see an officer put a pen in front of you and he kind of moves it left to right, and, and there's a systematic thing. It is a scientific, uh, exercise and they can be cross-examined on it whether they're doing it properly whether they're doing it improperly um, lots of officers have training actually every single police officer you encounter has training on HGN they get it in the police academy but I'd say that there's a lot of them that just aren't good right and I'll give an example I took a physics class I took two physics class uh, physics classes in college if you ask me to do a physics problem right now I would fail. Well, that's what a lot of officers do, except they not always admit that they don't know what they're doing. They don't practice it enough. They're not trained well enough. Sometimes you got to take a class two or three times. So they use the eye test. The eye test, the eyes don't lie is what you hear. Well, if there's a, if you have a horizontal nystagmus, if you have a nystagmus, usually that just means your eye is jumping and it's involuntary. So you can see that. You can actually see when they're moving the pen back at a 45 degree angle, you'll see the eye actually bounce. So that's something that they're looking for. And they're also trying to see if it's smooth, if it goes when they move their hand, whether your eyeballs move smoothly, sort of like a marble on a glass table, it goes very smooth. However, if there's a little bit of sand, you might see a little jerk as that marble goes across the glass. That's what they're looking for. They do that. Usually just based on that, they have enough to arrest, right? If they think that they have it. But again, a lot of officers make mistakes there. So let's just go to the next test. The next test or the next exercise, as they say in Florida, is the walk and turn. That's where you are given a set of instructions. You're placed into an instructional stance, which is very awkward. One foot in front of the other, heel to toe. And you're given a set of instructions, asked if you understand. The officer demonstrates half of the exercise for your convenience, and then you're supposed to 
watch this in about a minute and be able to do it. Well, it's analogous to if, if you're not a dancer and you're not a professional dancer and someone teaches you a dance move, can you pick it up like that? Probably not. Hence, a lot of people make mistakes. So that's the second exercise and they're looking for clues. They're looking for observations. Did you step off the line? Did you raise your hands for balance? Right, they're, they're looking for basic common sense things, things that a layman can see, right? If I'm a jury person and I tell someone to take nine steps and they take 30 steps, obviously they're not listening, right? If I tell them to take nine steps and turn and then walk back nine steps, if they walk nine and then turn around the opposite direction and then go 18, they're probably not listening and that may be a sign of impairment. So that's what that's what the police officer is looking for is basic layman's observations. Then what do you do? Then there's the, what's called the one leg stand where you, you balance on one foot, you put the foot in front of you, you kind of point your foot and you look at your toes and you count one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. And you're supposed to maintain that with one leg down, hands at the side as you're doing it. If you put your foot down for any reason, you're told that if you put it down, lift it back up and continue counting where you left off. So obviously if you're counting and you're 1,001, you put your foot down, 1,000, put your foot down again, put your foot down, keep putting your foot down, or you're swaying or you're lifting your hands, well, those are sort of general observations and the court says that those observations are what the officer goes by to determine whether or not your normal faculties are impaired, your ability to walk, talk, see, here and act in emergencies basically driving a vehicle right you got to be like i'm driving right now i can look at the camera but i'm also looking at my rear view mirror looking at my side mirror i'm looking in front of me i'm looking behind me and i'm maintaining a distance between you know behind the car that I'm, I'm behind and i'm not going lane to lane right so those are the important things for a dui they need to determine whether your normal faculties are impaired so that's how an officer establishes probable cause. He's gonna say you had a driving pattern, it was this, you were either going too fast or too slow, or you, you cut someone off, or you blew a stop sign or a red light. And then when he had personal contact, excuse me, when he had personal contact, he made observations. Those observations, again, bloodshot, glassy eyes, um, flushed face, slurred speech, um, lethargic in movements, um, a, a look of daisy, you know, being dazed and confused, handing him a, a credit card instead of your driver's license, forgetting what you're looking for and saying, what, what do you want again? These are all observations that he makes. And once he's made a, you know, a certain amount of observations, it's usually three, he then has, the court has said, he has enough reasonable suspicion to ask you out of the vehicle, start your DUI investigation. And that DUI investigation are those exercises that we mentioned. And those exercises are meant to determine whether your normal faculties are impaired. Now the court allows him to take his observations of your driving pattern, your personal observations while he's speaking to you in the vehicle, and his observations of you while you're doing the roadside sobriety exercises to make a determination collectively of whether or not he has probable cause to arrest you. And what is all of this encounter? This is the Fourth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment. Probable cause is a low standard, but it's something that we often challenge because police officers do make mistakes. Their training sometimes isn't up to par. Maybe their training's good, but maybe their ability to recall and retain that information is not so good. So I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. That's what they look for on a DUI stop, generally speaking. If you have a, a, a DUI and you need an attorney, consider my office. Thanks for listening.